Today on Chop Talk, we're going to remove some broken exhaust manifold bolts with a welder. Recently, I had someone bring me a 5.3 GM to try and get some broken exhaust manifold bolts out of. It had some bolts broken off sticking out of the head. It had one they tried drilling a hole through to try and remove it. Uh, it had a couple broken off flush with the head. It also had one bolt they rounded the head off on. And because of that, they couldn't remove the exhaust manifold. Now this definitely is easier because they brought it to me out on an engine stand and I just used a torch to cut the head off that bolt so I could slide it over the rest of it and pull it off. But uh, in a vehicle I would probably just remove the inner wheel wells, the plastic wheel well liners to uh, make more room so I could do this in the vehicle. Usually if you take the front tires and the inner wheel wells off you're staring right at the exhaust manifold and they're not too bad. And usually if they're sticking out of the head, I go ahead and grab them with vice grips to at least see if they'll turn. Because everybody should get lucky once in a while. Now when that doesn't work, my next go-to is usually the welder. And you know, part of the reason I like the welder is it puts heat into the bolt. And that expands the threads and then as it cools it contracts the threads. And I think it helps break up some of the corrosion to make it turn easier. Now a lot of guys that tell you to weld nuts onto the bolts and I have never had any luck with it. It is frustrating and doesn't work. I just normally do a series of spot welds on whatever's left of the bolt until I you know, have something I can grab onto with vice grips with. And a lot of the time your first two or three welds will bust right off. I mean, you're, especially if the bolt has been broken off for a while, you're dealing with a corroded surface or a rusty surface, and it's hard to get a good weld to that. But every time you bust a weld off, you tear a little bit of the surface off with it, and eventually you tear a clean surface to weld to off. Now on this one, I got lucky, and the first weld stuck. Um, once you get it to start turning, you just need to keep working it back and forth and gaining a little bit of time. If you try and go too much at once, you'll just start ripping a bunch of aluminum along with it and wind up completely tearing the head, the threads out of the head. And it's important you don't get in too big of a hurry. Guys try to rush and they keep busting it off over and over. Or, you know, they get in there with a die grinder or a drill and totally mess up the threads or, or galled it between the bolt and the threads in the head. At that point, it's just way more difficult to get out. But I mean, everybody has their own way of doing these things and just you just gotta find what works for you and go with that. Now on this one I got kinda lucky and the first weld stuck and I just kept working it back and forth and at this point we're just turning it around and around and coming out. For whatever reason, I have always had really good luck getting broken bolts out of LS's this way. And there it is, one down, five more to go. So that was the rearward most bolt on the driver's side cylinder head. And the first three in the driver's side manifold are also broken off. Now those three were all broken off pretty much flush, but the procedure is still the same. It's just a series of spot welds on them until you build them up enough that there's something to grab onto. And I usually, when I have two or three in a row like that, just alternate from one to the next one so I don't put too much heat in one all at once. So we're going to do the same procedure as before. We're going to clamp vice grips on and just start working them back and forth. And I got kind of lucky on this one as well. Um, first weld stuck and it started turning. But this is on an engine stand too, which makes life a lot easier. If it's in a vehicle, it, you know, a lot of times it's just a lot harder to get in where you want to be with a welding helmet on to try and put a decent weld onto a broken bolt. Like I said, the important thing is you just don't get in too big of a hurry. You know, just start working it back and forth an eighth of an inch at a time and then get that up to a quarter of an inch and then a half an inch and just keep going more and more all the time and, you know, occasionally try and move forward a little bit more. You just have to continually feel what the bolt is doing and how hard it's turning and decide what to do based on that. You know, as it starts turning easier, you can start going more and more each time. And this one is getting loose enough that we're starting to go around and around with it. So we're not too far from having it out. It's 
It's always a good feeling when you know it's about to come out and you're going to get somewhere. And that leaves us with four more to go. So we've got the next one starting to turn here as well. You know, honestly, as many bolts were broken off in this engine, I expected to have quite a little bit of trouble and have to fight several of them to get them out. Uh, I really, that's not the case. This went really well. Or I'm just that damn good. You be the judge. And while I am going to trim this down so it's not an hour or an hour and a half long video, uh, you know, I would show you if they were broken off or if I was having difficulty getting one out or really fighting it, but that's not how this went at all. Okay, and at this point I have moved over to the passenger side cylinder head and started welding on the studs on it. And these two on the back here were broken off flush. We're going to just try and build up a series of spot welds on them to build them up to give us enough to grab onto. Oh, did you see that? When the weld bubbles up like that on the end, there's contamination in the weld. And it usually makes the weld you're laying down get really porous, like a sponge. It, it, there's no strength to it. Usually those bust off right away as soon as you try to remove them out. But, like I say, you tear off a little bit of new metal each time when the weld breaks off. And eventually you get it down to a clean surface that you can get a good weld on. I'm trying to show quite a few of the welds here because it's important to kind of learn how to judge how much time and heat to put into the spot welds. There's too much of either and your weld will just wind up as a puddle of molten metal on the floor. Oh, and I entirely missed the bolt with that weld. See the piece of red hot wire underneath it? Um, yeah, let's never speak of that again. And the other thing I'm trying to do with a lot of these welds, I mean, you're trying to rebuild the bolt basically with a series of spot welds you're stacking on top of each other. But the other thing I do is a lot of times or you'll even see me weld on the side of that after I get it built up or run a bead down the side of it. And that's to keep it from being round to make it, you know, somewhat of a square shape or at least have an oval shape to where I can grab onto it with vice grips and the vice grips won't just slip on it and spin around without turning it. So same procedure again, we just start working them back and forth. Now if you're thinking I trimmed out a bunch of time where I was working that bolt back and forth, you would be correct. Do you really want to watch a video of me working bolts back and forth for an hour though? If you do, tell me about it in the comments down below. Now I was shocked on this engine every bolt in it came out on the first weld including even that one there the back one that uh, that the weld got really porous on when I did it and I said would break off and that is way better than this usually goes uh, you know usually you wind up breaking them off multiple times and I, I've had engines that I've spent an entire day trying to get a bolt out of before not often but it does happen I think in all I had about an hour to an hour and a half getting all the bolts out of this. And that includes time setting up cameras and messing around <laughs> to get this video recorded. It still shocks me that this one came out on the first weld. So there they all are. Uh, there actually was six, not five. But I found the sixth one under the bench later in the day. But this is how I've always done this, and I've always had good luck with it. You know, if you like welding nuts on bolts and you have good luck with that, uh, tell me about it in the comments down below. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, because I've never had any luck doing it that way. Now I usually go ahead and run a tap down all the bolt holes, just to make sure they're all clean and the threads are good. And clean the heads up a little bit, and there it is. And most of this cleaned up pretty good. Uh, that one is a little bit of galding from uh, vice grip marks. A little porosity around that one from the weld. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I think we look pretty good here. A couple of these, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think those are helicoils screwed into the head on several of these. So somebody's been here before. If you found this helpful, click the like button down below. We've got a new video coming every Monday, so please subscribe. And as always, have a great week.